I'd like to briefly look at SQL Alchemy, which is an object relational modeling library for Python, and ORM in general lets us um, take uh, particular database models and whatever RB RDBMS we like to use. Uh, particularly good ORM libraries will provide us with more options, more dialects, and allow us to access, like uh, SQL Alchemy, what we're going to be looking at, uh, allows us to access Microsoft SQL, SQL Server, SQLite, Firebird, uh, Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, SQL. Essentially, uh, it's allowing us to take the OOP constructs, like classes, methods, constructors, and so on, and uh, relate them to those models so that when we're working with, um, say, a front-end framework to deliver a web application, it's easy for us to reason about those objects uh, as being kind of first class in Python, rather than worrying about blocks of SQL and uh, ensuring that all of our rows and sessions are closed and handled and dispatched correctly. So what we're going to be doing here is creating a small test project. Create a virtual environment so that we're not mucking up our global Python uh, dependencies. We're going to assume that virtual environment running the activate script. We're now going to install SQL Alchemy. Alright, so let's write a trivial example. Create engine takes this kind of uh, URI like syntax, which is going to allow us to specify which engines and options to pass in order to connect to a particular RDBMS. In this case, we're looking to do a little trivial hello world type example. So, what we're going to do is create an in memory SQLite database. And we can do that with the following syntax. If we were to specify a file name here instead, relative, it would create a file name there, and uh, or, excuse me, objects that were created would persist between sessions. SQLite is pretty performant. It handles a lot of data, and I've been using it for several years without issue uh, across many languages with various bindings and libraries. If we provide an echo equals true keyword option to create engine, then we're going to get a dump out of all the SQL that's executed here. Now, what's particularly nice is that we get this um, base class creating function called declarative base. And when we take this, we can create a base class that's going to be shared by all of our models. And let's say we're creating a, a person model for some kind of business logic. So we subclass the base, the declarative base we've made here. And now we're going to bring in a few more uh, imports from SQL Alchemy, column, integer, string, foreign key, say, good for now. We've got to set this attribute table name. And I recommend lowercase and singular for naming convention. And now we can use these uh, column classes to create our various fields or columns on the table. So we'll say we're going to create a primary key, which is going to be an integer. We'll specify it as follows. We'll create a name. Raven, you know what? Let's be a little bit more. API like, we'll say that it's a username we're dealing with, and then it's going to have a uniqueness constraint. We'll just create no other properties, something that simple. So now, having subclass that base object, we are going to be able to use SQL Alchemy's kind of um, introspection facilities to create those tables, 
to fill it all out, and we'll go and bind it to the engine that we've made. And if we run just this example, we should see the table being created. Oh, okay. So it's checking to see that the table exists here in the first place. An error case, and then here it's exactly what we'd expect. Unique username, primary key ID, and that's a string. So, now we're going to take this a little bit further. Session Maker allows us to create a session factory which is bound to the engine that we've set up. So what happens now is, let's say for example if we wanted to create a session and work with it. Shouldn't be any issues there. Um, a session is kind of like a transaction. We'll be able to add objects, remove them, make changes in this context, and then when we're ready, we commit them. So uh, if we wanted to, now that we've set up the schema and we've created the session maker and we've uh, created the tables, if we wanted to use this declarative syntax with SQL Alchemy to create a user, for example, what we would do is names and we'll say the session will add that and we're going to commit and we should see as a result this transaction where yep the user that we created and specified in our Pythonic syntax here creating that object and setting its values is automatically created uh, converted into a relevant uh, SQL query and executed and committed now, if we wanted to go and, for example, um, uh, find users that were in the database, so let's say, for example, that again, we were to remove this from memory and we, for our first pass here, we'll uh, save the users database and we'll call it users.db, so we're going to create that, but now we're going to immediately remove the code to add that new user. Instead, we want to see who's in the database, uh, what users do we have here. Since if we do this now, it's not going to have any issues. And you'll also note that when it does this pragma, in order to determine that the person table already exists, it does not create it again. It doesn't need to. It knows that. So um, here what we're going to do is create a query that's all encompassing. It says simply give us every single user and when we get those results which we've placed in this locally declared variable called users, we iterate over it and we print it. Here it's just going to be an object that again is our base derived uh, user column object and it's going to have methods which make sense in context like if we were to say It's going to give us naturally what we've expected here. And so this is kind of our uh, hello worldist example of how we can use something like SQL, SQL Alchemy in order to, um, I've always had a problem with mixing up SQL and SQL. Uh, anyways, um, 
this has uh, been kind of the hello world, this example to uh, creating a model and storing it in a database using SQL Alchemy. Thank you.